Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 42 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. We have been discussing aromatic hydrocarbons in the previous few videos. Until now, we have completed nomenclature and isomerism. Then we did the structure of benzene where we talked about the Kekulé structures. And then we brought uh, the concept of resonance and stability of benzene into account. And then we explained the structure based on the resonance structure of benzene. After that, we discussed aromaticity and we have also done the preparation of benzene. Moving ahead with our discussion of aromatic hydrocarbons, let us now come to the properties of uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. Before we do the chemical properties, let us first start with the physical properties of aromatic hydrocarbons. As you have already studied, that aromatic hydrocarbons are non-polar compounds. They are made up of carbon and hydrogen, basically, which have a conjugated unsaturation. They are planar molecules. You've studied about aromaticity in just the previous video. So, a little bit we have an idea what the physical properties based on this would be. Yet, let us just take, the, take it up again and discuss this. The first property, the physical property of aromatic hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons are non-polar molecules. Since both carbon and hydrogen do not have a great difference in their electronegativity and they are mainly made up of hydrogen and carbon, therefore they are predominantly, mostly non-polar. Since they are non-polar, they, uh, they are non-polar molecules, so their properties that depend on the non-polarity uh, would also um, I mean, their properties that depend on non-polarity would be according to that. For example, they would dissolve in non-polar solvents. They would, uh, they would uh, not react, they would not show ionic reactions as easily. So, aromatic hydrocarbons are non-polar molecules is the first physical property. That since they are non-polar molecules and they are usually colorless liquids or solids. The physical state of the hydrocarbons depends on the number of carbons and um, in the chain and how heavy the molecule is. So usually these uh, hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons are liquids or solids. Rarely are they gases. And the very name of these compounds is aromatic. Aroma means smell, fragrance. So these are compounds which have a character usually they have a characteristic aroma that is a specific smell let me just give you examples you know uh, all the um, hydrocarbons which have a very typical smell uh, for example you have these perfumes which have thousands of perfumes with different types of smells that have been added those different aromas are usually due to aromatic hydrocarbons so they have a characteristic aroma and one example is the naphthalene balls. The naphthalene balls which are used as uh, moth repellents for or uh, they are put into your closets and when you, I remember when our mom used to pack the uh, winter clothing away, she would put these moth balls in every box uh, and even when we'd go on postings, all the packing would involve putting these moth naphthalene balls. They had a an awful smell and I can't forget my childhood with every uh, summer when we brought the winter I mean every winter when we brought the winter clothes out at the end of summer we would have that smell in the whole house and uh, it had to be you know all the clothes had to be put in the sun and then washed and put in the sun so that the smell goes away so the naphthalene balls they are usually used in toilets also to deal with the uh, germs and the smell and for preservation of clothes or because they are moth repellents. Aromatic hydrocarbons are immiscible with water. I told you since they are non-polar molecules, they would have the properties that non-polar substances have. Water is a polar solvent and non-polar solutes do not dissolve in a polar solvent. So usually they are immiscible in water because they are non-polar in nature, but they would readily mix or dissolve in organic solvents because organic solvents are mainly non-polar in nature. And they burn with a sooty flame. Sooty flame is where they produce uh, a black ash kind of a substance. So the soot 
or uh, the ash that is produced is basically uh, this is a property usually of unsaturated hydrocarbons the more saturated a hydrocarbon is the less is the soot produced i'll give you an example we use natural gas for our cooking that does not produce any soot if you have noticed it does not produce any soot but if you use an unsaturated hydrocarbon or uh, a hydrocarbon which has a heavier molecule uh, for example if you use um, um, heavier fractions of petroleum like candle wax you will see that it will produce like candle the candle wax when it burns if you put a lid over it it produces a black smoke which is soot right so the more unsaturated a hydrocarbon is or the heavier the molecule is the flame that will be produced would be a sooty flame and aromatic hydrocarbons are both. They start, the first compound in aromatic hydrocarbons is benzene, which has six carbon atoms. The molecule does have some weight. And as the mass of the hydrocarbon gets heavier and heavier, and there will be more and more unsaturation in it because there has to be an alternate double bond due to that conjugated double bond or the lone pair of electrons, whatever in conjugation, it'll have, it'll be more unsaturated the greater the unsaturation, the heavier the compound, the more would be the soot in the flame. So these were the physical properties of aromatic hydrocarbons. We now come to the chemical properties of aromatic hydrocarbons. The most important chemical property of aromatic hydrocarbons would be electrophilic substitution reactions. Electrophilic, if you remember, when we were talking about benzene, the extraordinary mm, stability of benzene, <coughs> excuse me, I told you that benzene, in spite of having uh, these uh, unsaturated, that is double bonds in it, it still shows substitution. It prefers substitution reaction to addition reaction. The reason is the resonance that I explained to you that resonance imparts extra stability to the benzene uh, ring and therefore it is those hydrogens which would get substituted and the benzene ring on the inside that is the conjugated double bonds they try to stay intact because resonance imparts uh, stability to the molecule. So they are characterized. This is one property that you will see in them that they would show electrophilic substitution reaction. This is the most important reaction. But they can also undergo addition under certain conditions. Look, you would like to be uh, like, uh, let's take an example. You like, uh, mm, you like to study a subject. So I don't have to work very hard. You love chemistry. So I don't have to work very hard. I just have to tell you and you will just study because you like the subject. There is someone who doesn't like chemistry. So is it necessary that he would not study chemistry simply because he doesn't like it? In that case, what will you do? You'll create the conditions. You'll try to create interest. You'll try to pressurize the child a little and tell him what is good for him, what is bad for him. And then he can be kind of forced or coerced into uh, carrying out that uh, studying the subject. The same thing, you can carry out the reaction. So under a little more drastic conditions or by assisting it with the help of catalysts or something, you can help the reaction. So aromatic hydrocarbons can undergo oxidation. They can undergo addition reactions. And of course, I told you that they burn with a sooty flame. So the burning is combustion. Combustion is oxidation. So that also occurs. Since electrophilic substitution reactions are the main reactions, and I'm starting the chemical properties in this video, I would like to like dedicate two uh, videos just to the electrophilic substitution reactions. Therefore, right now, in this video, we are going to discuss the oxidation, addition, and combustion, uh, combustion reactions. So we now come to the second. So the first uh, chemical property is electrophilic substitution reactions that I will do in part 43 and 44. We now come to the second property that they can undergo addition reactions. So addition reactions in aromatic hydrocarbons. Under vigorous conditions, I told you they are not happily going to do this because they don't like addition. But who is there who cannot be forced to do something, you know, give it 
a little heat give it a little i mean you just create a little bit of agitation and force it to undergo the reaction and that is what is done under vigorous conditions we force it at high temperature and pressure so you just create a high temperature and you start pressurizing <laughs> the molecules and in the presence of a nickel catalyst is a ca the catalyst is helping it okay come on there's there's nothing wrong it's encouraging it so the in the presence of a catalyst under drastic conditions vigorous conditions like a high temperature and pressure and with nickel catalyst the hydrogenation of benzene can take place and if Benzene. Now, this is an addition reaction. So, the multiple bonds, they break and three molecules of hydrogen will add to it. So, all the double bonds will, will break. As each bond breaks, as every bond breaks, what will happen? Every carbon, if this double bond breaks, both the carbons get back their electron. Okay? This bond breaks, both the carbons get back their electron. And this bond breaks, both the carbons get back their electron. Right? When that happens, there are three molecules of hydrogen. Each hydrogen atom comes and attaches itself to each carbon. Now, it is a saturated hydrocarbon. Do you see this? Cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is a saturated cyclic hydrocarbon. It is no longer aromatic. It is not an aromatic hydrocarbon, but addition has taken place. So, benzene can add on hydrogen under drastic conditions of high temperature and pressure in the presence of a catalyst like nickel it gives you a saturated hydrocarbon that is cyclohexane six atoms of hydrogen or three molecules of hydrogen will add on to it under ultraviolet light now this is again a special condition you know uh, chlorine usually uh, gives these photosensitive reactions it is sensitive to light so usually we use ultraviolet light when we are carrying out reactions with uh, chlorine. So under ultraviolet light, it has been seen that benzene can add on chlorine to itself. Molecules add on to uh, chlorine. I mean, chlorine molecules add on to benzene to give benzene hexachloride. The same thing, instead of hydrogen, chlorine atoms will add to every carbon. So you will get benzene hexachloride. It's also written as BHC and the common name or the industrial name of this compound is gemaxane. So this, this was addition reactions of uh, benzene or um, aromatic hydrocarbons. We take the example of benzene at this stage. Then we come to the combustion, combustion of benzene or aromatic hydrocarbons. As I told you that uh, they burn with a sooty flame. Benzene also, what is burning? It is oxidation reaction. Benzene also burns in oxygen and it burns to give carbon dioxide. Since benzene consists of carbon and hydrogen, when it burns in oxygen, what will it give? Carbon will combine with oxygen to give carbon dioxide. Hydrogen will combine with oxygen to give water. So that those are the products that you will get, carbon dioxide and water. And of course, you will balance the equation. Uh, and you will, I mean, accordingly, you will see how many molecules of oxygen are required. And the thing that has to be remembered is that when combustion occurs, carbon dioxide and water are produced, but it burns with a sooty flame because it's a highly unsaturated hydrocarbon. So C6H6 plus 15 by 2 oxygen molecules. 15 by 2 would be 7.5 if you really see. And uh, you'll understand why this 15 by 2 uh, we write. If there are six carbon atoms, for carbon dioxide, how many oxygens are required? Six molecules of oxygen are required, right? But in water, there are six atoms of hydrogen. So how many water molecules will be produced? Three molecules because every molecule of water has two atoms of hydrogen. So two atoms of hydrogen will take only one atom of oxygen, right? So there will be three atoms of oxygen required. So 12 plus 3 right six at six oxygen molecules is 12 oxygen atoms 12 plus 3 is 15 so you need 15 atoms of oxygen but we are using molecules of oxygen we are using molecules of oxygen so how many molecules of oxygen will be required we need 15 atoms every molecule has two atoms so 15 divided by 2 is the total number of molecules will be that will be required 
to uh, get six molecules of carbon dioxide and three molecules of water. Now looking at this reaction, a general equation has been given or a general reaction has been given for the combustion of any hydrocarbon. If there is any hydrocarbon which has X number of carbons and Y number of hydrogens, then we know that it would produce X number of carbon dioxide molecules and every hydrogen produce, produces uh, H2O. That is, whatever is the number of hydrogens, half number of those Half of that would be the number of molecules of water that would be produced. Look here, there were six atoms of carbon and in the products we got six molecules of carbon dioxide and there were six atoms of hydrogen and we got three molecules of water, which means half of this. So, one we can write, we can, we'll come to the oxygens later. If there were six atoms of carbon, X atoms of carbon, there are X molecules of carbon dioxide. So, there is X CO2, right? And if there are Y number of hydrogens, there were six hydrogens, six by two is three, six divided by two is three, which means Y upon two. You will get Y upon two number of water molecules. Now, based on this, how will you calculate the number of molecules of oxygen? You remember? Okay, here, let's take a look. For carbon, you need X number of oxygen molecules because every carbon uses two atoms of oxygen so whatever is the number of atoms of carbon those many molecules of oxygen you will require so x will be x only but for y two atoms of y how many molecules are produced y by two and every molecule needs only one oxygen atom it does not need a molecule of oxygen it needs only one atom of oxygen so you will say y by two molecules are needed and uh, y by two uh, molecules are produced and each molecule needs only half of a molecule of oxygen. So y by two into two in the denominator would be y by four. One fourth, y by fourth of the molecule of oxygen will produce y by two molecules of water. So this is how you would generally calculate the, um, I mean give a general equation for combustion of any hydrocarbon. Right. So with this, I'll wind up today's video. In the next video, we are going to talk about the first property and the most important property that is electrophilic substitution reactions of benzene. So if you wish to watch the other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.